Hello there, welcome. Have you been wondering what the top meta contender could be? Today I think we're gonna find out. I'm playing a red line Dromai into an Azalea. And, well, let's just say the result is not quite expected. Right off the bat, I'm starting with a pretty strong, strong attacking hand. Um, unfortunately, it's, unfortunately, it's turn zero, so Azalea gets three blocks as far as Azalea can block. Um, which is obviously not quite that strong. So we already leak some damage, which is nice. And we get to set up the Imperial Flame Tome in our arsenal to build some big board on the actual first turn. Now, I decided not to crack the gold here because the Tome will actually generate us some ash anyways. And... Any on hits Azalea sends to us that are not time walking us will just gladly take even this one. You actually can't put the Flamescape Furnace alone in front of this because it'll get the, the counter before the combat chain closes and when it closes it has two counters and actually destroy itself. Now right here I'm thinking and the right Decision is pretty sure sink below and tomultai. Uh I disregard the active seek and destroy though, and I think I can't can't actually uh, and I think I can actually arsenal, which is a mistake. Obviously, if I was able to arsenal keeping the sink below is perfectly fine. Now Building a board against Azalea is extremely strong, especially with a high HP dragons. Um, though even Kylora is a big threat to her. And Azalea can't actually ignore dragons that early on, because they will just be able to... If she doesn't time walk us one turn, I will completely out damage her. Now, the right play would have been, as I said, keeping the E-Strike, sending that first with go again and then the Dragon attack. I also, I decided to throw the Mirror Guy there to, to tax her hand even more. Because I do believe that if the game just goes longer, we don't actually care. We're fine with that, because that means more Dragons Azalea has to worry about. Sleep Dot is pretty strong against Dromai. It will keep us from, well, using the go again on our dragons and creating ash. Fortunately, our hand is well usable without those hero powers right now. I can still create the dragon and then pitch something into the furnace to make, to make the... No, actually not. I can still create the dragon. That's it. But me still having the gold up, I'm quite confident that dropping to zero ash isn't that big a deal. So I gladly take the full damage here. Because, yeah, I could have blocked with one dust up, but I'd rather throw the four in her, into her face. Because four is bigger than three. And we might even get the, the ash back here. Not having the, not having an AD rate in Arsenal by now kind of sucks, and it's obvious that we are quite a bit behind right now. Um, the the missed E strike would put us ahead, but well, maybe maybe our deck can make up for it. Now once again we have just four damage without anything threatening us on it wise but since I'm not actually able to convert my hand efficiently here I decide to just use two sigils on my turn and block this out um I could have also gone for 
Now this, this I think is a mistake, but um, I could have also gone for just a CNC pitching a sigil. But as I said before, I'm not too, too unhappy with this game going longer. I'm playing quite a bit of the react, so I do have quite some control, even against dominated arrows. And every time I, I'm putting a dragon on the board, I'm asking Azalea the question whether she can clear that and present a threat to me or not. And if not, I can actually keep a full hand or my board. Now this arrow taxes every non-action card. Fortunately, we're basically only running action cards, so that doesn't really matter. The way our cost curve works out, I do want to block with one card here. Though, in hindsight, keeping another one so we can play Rebel, Ezvalai and Belong Mirage wouldn't be bad either. I'm actually not too sure which one would be the, the correct play here. And now we do sit quite comfortably with that T-Rex and Arsenal. Even though they have a full hand now, with us at basically left parity, it's not too worrying a situation. And that's sort of what makes Jomai that strong right now. Just D-Rigs are really strong in the meta, and a lot of the popular decks like Azalea, like Kasai, like Victor can't control board that easily. And the advantage Redland Roma has like, uh, over, over Big Dragon Roma, for example, is that she can convert her hands aggressively, which is sometimes hard for, for the Big Dragon versions. So if Big Dragon got hit with the Dominate attack, so denied blocking with three cards, let's say, and found themselves stuck with maybe a Necria and a Thermai, and to burn them all, there is, there are really, really only, only undervalued plays they can do with that hand. Another sleep dart. I'm deciding to play out the, the chroma next turn. Um, get the ash back from playing the oasis here. Oh no, actually, I'm, I think I'm hustling the chroma. No, 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 we're playing the chroma, right? And then we've right, and then we're throwing the snatch afterwards, so we're kind of taxing the hand again. This way, we are not completely vulnerable because they only have that free card hand now. And there is another direct for us to put an arsenal if we get the chance. But by now, those Azalea flips get kind of annoying. We are able to make a, one, a good one card play though. Sure, we will leak three damage, but we can get two more Ash Wings out and that Fate for Scene in Arsenal. And that board state should make up for the, the life difference. Drawing another another direct is exactly what we want to see. And then now that we have a bit of board state, the snatch into Snapdragon Scalers first is a 
very potent, potent play. Unfortunately, Azalea does make the right decision in clearing our board here a bit. So we're able to block this out with the direct in Arsenal, but I'm still contemplating whether to respect the Rain Razor or not. So because Red and the Ledger can go up to seven here, I am deciding to put the Command and Conquer in front and not the Humble. And we wouldn't mind, <clears throat> um, excuse me, drawing into Kyloria here. After them having to block out the snatch, that, or maybe not. Actually, if they don't block out the snatch, we get a second draw. That's, that's a better way to phrase it. And forcing interaction from Azalea is always good. So with snatch and or command and conquer, you kind of force them to block if they don't want to give you insane value. And now we get to pressure not only their life total, but once again their hand with Kyloria. While having that direct on Arsenal. They had the popper unfortunately, but it's okay. Another direct. Have another knock the deck that knock the death whistle, so they get another dominated attack here. For now, that's coming in for eight, and it stays on eight. That's very and very fortunate for us. We can invest both directs and completely take this out. Otherwise, we would have gotten time walked. So blocked with the sink below from hand and lost our whole the whole rest of it. No, actually not the whole rest of it. Two more cards. But this way we can block it out completely. And develop a very nice nice dragon. One they need to respect. And getting the burn them all on board here is also very strong. We are kind of getting low. And Arcane is something that Azalea either struggles with in, in pitching a card from each hand, or just eventually dies too. I contemplated putting two Burning Walls out instead and Usling Miragai. But having Miragai on board, as I said, buys us at least one attack of Azalea. Fortunately for them, they do have a Gorgon attack here. So clearing Miraga doesn't become a huge problem. Now with that knock of the death whistle, they... Do get to put the red in the ledger on top again. Therefore, it's clear we are only able to get one play out on our next turn, and Command and Conquer would be just the best thing to do then. Because it once again threatens their arsenal and makes them block 
which makes the hand way more inefficient. And now I'm not actually even blocking, I'm keeping one card for my arsenal, which will be the, the Chromai. It's a nice chain opener to because we need a red attack first before our dragons get go again. Not a red attack, a red card to be played. And even if they have a popper, only Chromite dies and we still get to come in with everything afterwards. Which will be very threatening on such left such low life totals. Now the banishes don't matter here anyways. We should keep Command and Conquer around for another Codex, but that's about it. And actually also a Snatch. Now if they can't threaten us enough here, it's game over. And while this is damage, it doesn't make us discard anything, as long as we put the Fate for Scene in. And with two chromas in hand, we are sure to get the whole dragon crew in there. In combination with chromas, dust up is also a very good card. It presents five damage if they let it hit. And if we have an extra action point, we can actually play it in between the dragons. So, yeah, pitching, billowing, and even the Ezvola here should be the more efficient thing to do. As well, it does present three damage now and then in the next turn. But if we threaten more damage right now, they are forced to block, which is why I decide to go with Dust Up. And now we even have two pitch floating, which means we can cash in our gold in the end. Okay, seems like they have no popper, which is going to be insane because we are allowed to keep the chromas around for another turn. And now, yeah, sequencing wise, we should attack with the board first to not let them know what what else we have in our hand. So, Azalea can't really interact with us anyways here right now. Now we're getting a, a nice, nice block on only the Ashwing. Which is already a, a win. Mm, sand cover is really a nothing burger right now, but it's still fine to, to be pitched into furnace or just to, to open the chain with. As I said, we have the extra action point. We get to come in with dust up and keep attacking afterwards. So present five damage now and keep the ash ring for the next turn. And then we'll strip something else from them now. Doing the banishes for burn them all now. And then they don't have anything unless they draw into three popper. No, even then. Even then they don't have a hand. So it's it's over. It's over for them. Still we can think about sequencing right now, and I think putting the burn them all out first is a mistake here. Because it will still trigger if we put it out later and attack with the dragon again and that way they don't know if they have to pitch a yellow card or if a red card is sufficient yeah but um that game was actually quite surprising to me i did not necessarily think we would had such a good matchup into into azalea because azalea um, historically fares really well into aggressive decks um with that red line draw my though you have so many directs that well you kind of can circumvent that whole thing and well you're not only an aggressive deck you're also a control deck and that hybrid makes it insanely strong 
And yeah, that's that's it with that game. I'm pretty sure I'm going to stick to Redland Omai for now. She has a really strong meta position. So if you want to see more gameplay of that, make sure to stick around and I'll see you then.